Hello once again Mustang basketball fans and welcome to another edition of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler here at Studio One, Marshall Local Cable Access and at smsumustangs.com. I'm your host Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University as we talk about a couple of Mustang wins from this past weekend. The Mustangs beating the University of Mary and Northern State at the RA facility. We'll talk about those games, take a look at the highlights and get insight from the head coach, Brad Bigler. And we'll also look ahead to this weekend's games up north at Minnesota Duluth and Bemidji State. And joining us on this week's show, as always, is the head coach, Brad Bigler. Mustangs with the win over the Mary, 77-62 last Friday and 67-60 victory over Northern State. Mustangs uh, begin this new year at home with uh, three games uh, at home um, and go 3-0. and And coach, uh, right before break, we talked about the, the stretch of games there um, over the next couple of weeks. You're really hoping to at least go 4-1, and one, and that's exactly what you did. The only loss uh, since the new year was at Minnesota State Moorhead in a, a game that went down to the wire. But uh, you did what you had to do to defend your home court the past uh, couple of weekends, especially this past weekend. And we've talked a lot about that uh, throughout the year where uh, protecting your home court is a uh, it is a must and then when you go on the road if you can find a way to split and then occasionally if you can get a sweep that would be a, a big momentum in a conference tournament well, or a conference you, regular season correct and, and uh, the, both these wins this past weekend kind of different styles you score 77 points uh, shoot 53 percent in the opening half against mary and didn't shoot particularly well against northern state uh, but defensively really forced the wolves into a lot of turnovers 23 which was a, a season high for the wolves and and really got after on the defensive end and i thought uh, you know that was a group effort there was a lot of guys getting out in passing lanes uh, good ball pressure for majority of the night and and i thought we finished with uh, defensive rebounds too and uh when you can kind of put a complete package together like that on the defensive end, it's going to give you a chance. Well, again, the Mustangs beat the University of Mary 77-62. Four Mustangs in double figures scoring that game. 17 for Jordan Miller, 15 for William Giddings, 12 points, 9 rebounds for Nick Smith, and 11 points off the bench for Trent Carlson. In the game against Northern State, Mustangs uh, Jordan Miller had 19 to lead the way and 15-7 and for Matt Zager. And then there's an example there, Coach, where you're just having guys – Every game, somebody different, it seems like, steps up. Uh, Zager, uh, only three points on Friday, but came through with some uh, some clutch shots uh, on Saturday against Northern State, hitting a couple of three-pointers, and, and uh, it just shows the depth this team has. And a lot of it comes back to just how teams have to defend us. Uh, what are they going to take away? If they're going to try to take away Nick Smith or Jordan Miller, uh, that leaves them more opportunities for like a Matt Zager, a Bernard Birch, and a Will Giddings to score. Uh, but at the same time, Matt is very good at uh, getting out in transition. Uh, I guess Northern, he knocked down a couple mid-range pull-up jumpers. He, uh, he knocked down a couple threes, and he got to the foul line. So uh, Matt's a versatile scorer, and uh, he's very capable of doing that. Well, again, on Friday night, another player that stepped up, uh, Casey Susan Guth, and it really was great all weekend long. He was 6 of 7 from the field in his two games, combining for 14 points and 9 rebounds in two games, and, and minute-wise, averaging 15 minutes a game. Perfect numbers for Casey Susan Guth. And uh, he got a couple offensive rebounds versus Northern in that second half that uh, Northern was making a push, and Casey would get an offensive rebound, put back, and those are momentum-type plays that uh, help you win a ball game. Yep, and uh, of course, uh, he came off the bench, did that, uh, stepping up. and mentioned Mustangs hit eight three-pointers in the game against University of Mary, hit six more against the Wolves. And Mustangs are now eight and three in the conference, sole possession of fourth place in the NSIC, just one game behind second place and a couple uh, be, uh, behind the leaders, Winona State uh, University, as we wrap up here for the Mustangs, uh, 11 games halfway through this conference season. But the Mustangs are now going on the road for four. And we'll talk about those uh, games coming up here later on in the show. But looking back again at the weekend, uh, Coach, and um, a game against Northern State, you forced them into 23 turnovers, and uh, you, Mustangs commit 16 as well. But you know, what was the, the key you think in that ball game to, to really force that many turnovers on Northern State against a team that you know has done pretty well the last few weeks? They've got some big wins. They beat Minnesota State the night before. They uh, beat Winona State. Uh, and what was the key to that defensive end? I think going into the game, both teams knew that it was going to be a physical basketball game, and uh, we had to be able to handle their ball pressure, and we were thinking that we also had to apply ball pressure to them. They're a team that executes very well, a team that can hurt you inside if, if you're not trying to put some pressure on the perimeter and you're not trying to get to some fronts. They're a team that 
uh, with Tetzloff and, and Pryor, who Pryor didn't play, but they have some guys inside who are capable of being scor scoring threats. So we had to uh, just try to take them out of the comfort zone, and I thought we did that for the majority of the night. Yeah, again, uh, Wolves led 52-50 with about seven and a half minutes to go, but a, a big stretch there, a 9-0 run by the Mustangs, five straight by William Giddings, hit a big three-pointer during that stretch. And uh, Again, we, we talk about him each week, but uh, you know, didn't shoot particularly well on Saturday, but made some big shots when he had to. And uh, right before that, uh, that three, he actually got a steal. And so he kind of set up that possession where he got a possession and a uh, little handoff action, which we'll see on the clips. And uh, he just kind of takes a rhythm dribble and knocks steps up and shoots it with confidence. And uh, that was a, a battle, to, to say the least, for the Mustangs and, and sealed it off with some free throws late. And uh, the Mustangs win 67-60. And, you know, you, you talk about all your, your scouting reports and, and whatnot and preparing for each game. We've talked about that over the years. And then you have a guy from Northern State uh, who averages 1.5 points per game hits five field goals scores 12 points hits two three-pointers uh you know i mean he kept him in the ball game with some big shots but it just tells you how crazy it can be no matter how much film you watch and scouting you know guys make plays and uh, it's tough to defend and i coach uh, and i think coach sather would say the same thing when i when i say this but uh not having their best player is one thing uh, but i think their role players or their guys that came in in that position uh, they stepped up big time for them last week, and I thought they were very productive. I think the night before, they might have been like 12 or 15 from the field. And uh, so against us, and Spencer steps up and knocks down some threes, has 12 points in eight minutes. And uh, so I think uh, all in all, as a team, Northern State really stepped up uh, as a unit to, to try to match our intensity and uh, to kind of make up for a prior missing uh, on the weekend. So they're going to need the continued effort with that uh, coming in the following week. And again, the Mustangs uh, with the win on uh, Saturday night over Northern State, 67-60. Uh, a low-scoring game for both teams, but the Mustangs do pull it off and, and uh, get the win and now have won five of their last six games heading into this uh, weekend road trip at Minnesota Duluth and Bemidji State. And uh, A couple of other notes to talk about, Coach, from this past weekend. Uh, you, we mentioned uh, some of the guard play, but and Nick Smith giving you guys a presence in the middle. And, and you know when he stays on the floor, we did get some foul trouble, some of those guys but uh, key for him again and uh, really doing a nice job getting rebounds had nine and uh, and, and four this past weekend in, in the two games and I, I think uh, more and more you see us uh, trying to get the basketball in his hands by more uh, design uh, sets and then trying to really work that basketball in and, and get him a touch and make them have to defend the post uh, I think you Right now, we're making teams having to defend a lot of ball screen actions, a lot of dribble penetration action. And now if we can incorporate him a little bit more as we get going and uh, he wants the basketball and is deserving of the basketball, then uh, we'll get him that basketball. And he's a guy who can score over people with his jump hook. He's a guy that passes well out of a double team, and uh, he's a big part of our offense. Well, again, the Mustangs with a couple of wins this past weekend over University of Mary and Northern State. As we mentioned, the Mustangs now 9-6 and six overall, but more importantly, 8-3 and three in the NSIC. And, and of course, uh, that 9-6 and six record coach. And before we get to the highlights, you know, one thing I want to touch on, um, the 9-6, and six, two losses against Division One schools. And, you know, maybe those games we talked about are going to help you later on in the season. Both those schools, Milwaukee and South Dakota State, Milwaukee's first in their conference, South Dakota State, a game out of theirs. Um, you know, I think in the long run, those playing those teams is what helping you be battle tested for conference play, not only in conference but on the road as well. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday at practice. As a matter of fact, um, just the fact that early on in the year, going on the road and, and getting those games in, uh, it, it's hopefully it's prepared us for this next trip that we have. Uh, we have. Duluth and Bemidji like we're going to talk about soon, but then we follow that up with a Winona and Upper Iowa. So uh, these next four games on the road, hopefully uh, we've set ourselves up to be prepared for this weekend. Yes, and uh, obviously it has made the team tough and, and played very well uh, on the road as well, but uh, now at home I have a very good home stand in the Mustangs that get those victories this past weekend. Well, we've talked about the Marion Northern game. Let's take a look at the highlights from this past weekend as the Mustangs uh, hosted the Marauders and the Northern State University Wolves. It will start off Friday night's game, Mustangs and the Home Whites taking on the Marauders and uh, William Giddings opening it up with a three-pointer and, and then uh, getting a nice Baseline pass from Matt Zager and with the basket. And then the Mustangs here putting that full court pressure on Coach. <clears throat> and I see Jordan Miller come from behind, getting the tip, and then uh, getting rewarded with the bucket. Mustangs forced 
the Mary Marauders into 13 turnovers, and this is kind of the typical what we saw all night long, Bernard Burge with the steal, and then boom, quickly in transition, Jordan Miller goes up and lays it in for the basket. And Trent Carlson hit a couple of threes in the ball game. Here's one of them at the top of the key. A good drive and penetration. Driving kick by uh, Bernard for, to get Trent open. Carlson, 11 points off the bench, 4 of 7 from the field. And as I mentioned, two three-pointers. Matt Zager driving and scoring his only basket of the game. Mustang shot 53% in the opening half to build a 41-33 halftime lead. Here's Jamel Barnes got a great look to Casey Susan Guth for two. And then Jordan Miller knocks down a three. Here's at the bottom of your screen. I see Nick uh, looking opposite right away. Jordan was open and a great pass by Nick Smith. Lavion West, bottom of the screen, goes up strong, draws the foul. Mustangs did get to the free throw line quite a bit. Struggled at the line, 17 of 26, but made enough to seal the victory. Birch into Smith, two points. And then Carlson with the three, followed up by a couple of baskets by William Giddings. Great skip by Casey Susan Guth and nice extra pass by Tramel Barnes. As you mentioned, Giddings, 5 of 8 from the field and a perfect 3 of 3 from a long range. And here's one of those three. Top of your screen. I think more and more, you know, teams didn't really respect that shot and he drills it. And if they start coming up on him, coach, I'm sure he can drive to the basket as well. And we made a few adjustments. Uh, Mary was was defending our ball screen action in a particular way and uh, we made a alignment change and that allowed Will to get some open looks. It's a charge taken by Nick Smith. See the excitement by his teammates. Casey Susan Guth get in the old board and the basket. Again, five rebounds in this Friday night game for Susan Guth. And Giddings again, knocking down the three and then getting a steal. Here's we uh, start the second half. Great read. And then Nick Smith Oh, after this Jordan Miller three-pointer and a couple of plays by Nick Smith and highlighted by a dunk. Mustangs led by as many as 23 points in this game in the second half. And coach, got to be impressed getting deep in the block on these two possessions. And that's where uh, Bernard and Will making the right decision and finding Nick in open space and we're going to see Nick throwing, down, throwing one down for a nice dunk. Birch driving, gets the... Shot off the window, Trent Carlson with a steal. Comes back the other way and gets an and one. He's, uh, it looked pretty athletic right there yes, with those light on his feet right there. Looked light, I think the official said, well, we'll give a foul on there too. But he drills it. Miller driving left side of the lane in for two. And William Giddings nearly hammering this dunk down. Let's take a look. He's been known to do that. It, somehow it came out of there. I don't know if he threw it down too hard, Coach, or what, but this, it does not go all the way through the, the basket, through the net, so it does not count. Otherwise, he has 17 points. And Dalston Jones knocking down a three as the Mustangs uh, close out the win. Well, a couple more here, actually. Trent Carlson and then Tramel Barnes. Again, Trent off the bench, 11 points. And then Barnes in the lane, using the left hand, goes up strong. Mustangs uh, get the victory in that ball game against uh, the Mary Marauders by a score of 77-62. Of course, last year, Mary went to the NCAA tournament. They uh, did lose their head coach and a couple of uh, very good players. But, uh, of course, nice to get some revenge on uh, University of Mary. And the Mustangs win 77-62. And, of course, Mary was a team that the weekend prior beat Minnesota State <coughs> Moorhead. And uh, they have had, had some scores, but you really got after it. Nobody scored double figures for Mary in that game, Coach. Uh, and uh, I tell you what, overall, to hold two teams to – 62 and 60 points in, in both ball games. Uh, very happy, I'm sure. Again, we've talked about offense a lot, but uh, the defense is definitely a key to winning basketball games. And that's where <clears throat> we've, uh, coming out of Christmas, that was a point of emphasis to, to really get better on the defensive end, uh, break down some of our, uh, our mistakes. And, and right now, I believe we're defending personnel better than we have the entire season, and it's nice to see our guys 
uh, paying more attention to details. And that's been a, a big emphasis for us, and, and they're doing a good job. We talk about paying attention to details and, and personnel. Uh, what does that go into? You know, you've got a scouting report. Is it just basically going over each player, uh, opponent, and, and whoever's supposed to defend that player, you know, getting their scouting report and knowing exactly what to do and, and, and just everybody then working together as a team? I think part of it is being instinctive out there, uh, understanding if you're defending a shooter or an athlete, a guy who puts the ball on the floor, and how you need to defend them within the, within the rotations. Uh, whether you need to leave him to go help, whether you need to stay with him, or at the same time, um, just if there's a guy driving on you, whether you can help off the drive or whether you have to stay with your man. I think some of those mistakes that we were making before Christmas, uh, uh, and especially at the end of ball games that were, that were costly, uh, I think right now you're seeing a lot of improvement in those uh, those areas. And that's one thing that you can continue to talk about as a coach and is that a lot of fans may not see it, but somebody gets beat in, on, a, on a ball in a half, on the half-court defense and nobody really pays much attention and maybe somebody gets there late and they think, boy, maybe it's their fault, but it's, it's an entire team yeah. because if somebody gets beat off the dribble, it affects your entire yeah. whole defensive set. And I think we've been doing a great job of taking charges uh, for probably the last eight games, but... Um, we need to continue to get better. I thought versus uh, both teams this past weekend, we t missed opportunities where we could have stepped up or were one step late uh, to being there to take a charge. And uh, those are big defensive plays, and those could be momentum plays. Well, again, the Mustangs uh, rebounding uh, after that win against the University of Mary, bouncing back the next night, taking on Northern State, and the Mustangs win 67-60 over the Wolves, again, a team that beat the uh, conference-leading Winona State Warriors a couple of weeks uh, earlier and uh, had some momentum after a win against Minnesota State the following uh, the previous night before coming to Marshall. And we'll take a look at these highlights. And again, it was a battle throughout for the Mustangs uh, against the Wolves, SMSU in the uh, gold uniforms for Saturday night's game. And Nick Smith uh, getting the Mustangs up early with a basket. SMSU shooting 43% in this first half. Jordan Miller with a three. And then follows it up with a pull-up jumper just inside the arc. The Wolves, on the other hand, shooting 61% in that first half. Didn't get many shots off as the Mustangs did, but uh, were able to keep it close. And Coach, you, you trailed for the early moments of the game, but uh, you know had a nice stretch there, go up by eight in the, in the first half, and uh, the Wolves were able to cut it down to a one-point lead at halftime. But did get some uh, touches in the block. And you see Bernard Birch taking it up and uh, no foul, but uh, drew some contact. And, and then on the defensive end, just a great job stealing the basketball. And, uh, and, and Bernard defensively was solid the entire weekend. Sometimes you forget to mention those types of things because you don't see him in the stat sheet, but uh, he defended well as well as Tremel Barnes. Zager with the three, two of three from long range. Mustangs in transition. Miller on the right wing goes baseline and... Extra pass for the Mustangs there. West dropping it off to Zager for the three. Lobby on pull up from 16. Nice pass. We'll go with that. And Zager, the offensive rebound and the hoop. And again, another cutting Susan Guth to the basket. Bernard Birch finds him. And I think that's where you see Casey's uh, a different uh, type of uh, defensive matchup for the opposing team where. Uh, Nick is going to be more of a primary guy where Casey's a little more active and, and creates space. See this great pass for Zager, dropping it off to Nick Smith in that possession before. Great look there. I don't think many people thought that was going to be a pass. And Jordan with the ability to distribute the basketball. Now the Mustangs, we go to the second half. Again, Mustangs led 34-33 at halftime. Tight contest. Mustang struggling three point range, just six of 15, but a big offensive board and then a foul. And that allowed, a, again, another offensive board. Foul by Nick Smith, or drawing the foul. And Casey Susan Guth, don't see this very often, but creating his own shot. Good move. Spins and in the lane. Nobody was open, Coach. Yeah, to shoot that, right? Gotta go for it. Mustangs take a charge. Lobby on West. Excellent to see yeah. Lob take that. That's a momentum change. And Mustangs again back to back turnovers and big steal by Tremel. And again, this is midway through the half and a 
Just a one, two possession game for either team having the lead and a huge three by Miller. Again, Jordan, game high, 19 points. And that's where we've seen <clears throat> our ball screen action late in the second half. So that's where teams start to break down. Uh, those point guards have a tough time con consistently defending that, and they left Jordan Miller for a wide open shot. Okay, see another old board put back. Now, under 10 minutes left in the game. Zager can't find anybody, puts up the shot, and it goes in. And that was a big shot for us. That was, uh, I think that put it to about a two possession game, or maybe even a three possession game, but. Uh, a great shot by Matt Zager. Great steal by Giddings. And then comes down, and this is the three-pointer that you talked about earlier in the show. And you see just Will, uh, again, uh, feeling the confidence and just stepping up and knocking it down. Huge three by Giddings. And then the Mustangs get the steal by Bernard, and then in transition to Giddings. And the Mustangs, it's an and one. This is the run that gave the Mustangs the lead for good. There's just good team defense here, Coach. Nothing open for the Wolves. No, as you see, we we helped on the ball screen. We had a guy rotate over to, to take the guy who was uh, open, and then we had another guy help out to, to get the block shot. So that was a great team effort. Susan Guth again. Get the old board. So the fouls prior to the shot. Bernard Birch spinning, making the shot. Jordan Miller driving in. And then free throws late for the Mustangs. Have to snare the rebounds to get these wins. And Zager with an offensive uh, rebound, or defensive rebound, and then hitting both free throws. And the Mustangs uh, go up 67-60. And that was the ball game. Here's the last shot put up by the Wolves. And again, our favorite play, showing that scoreboard, the clock running out. Mustangs get the victory, 67-60 to over of the Northern State Wolves and the Mustangs 9-6 and six overall, 8-3 and three in the Northern Sun Conference. As we talked about now, the Mustangs will begin a road trip this weekend at Minnesota Duluth and then Bemidji State on Saturday, uh, followed by Upper Iowa and Winona State and coach four uh, important games. And, and we know this uh, only halfway through the conference season. Um, it's always going to be a battle, and, and um, you know, but you really find out a lot about your team what you can do on the road and, and uh, now you've got some big ones coming up obviously the biggest one is Friday night against Minnesota Duluth and uh, just get focused up now and get ready for the yeah. Bulldogs and you know is that thing I'm sure you'll stress throughout the week is you know just how tough can we be playing on the road and I think uh, when you look at this road trip right now with how Bemidji and Duluth are playing this may be the di most difficult road trip in the NSIC right now uh, part of it's the distance, part of it's both teams are playing well, but uh, it, it's a games, or they're both games where there's difficult matchups for us, and we'll have to be up for the challenge. And of course, against uh, the Bulldogs, a team that struggled at home on Saturday against St. Cloud State, they were beaten handily. But prior to that, uh, they beat beaten Concordia, putting up uh, almost 100 points, mm -hmm. scored 101 against Augustana. The defense really going to be mm -hmm. tested against uh, the, the Bulldogs on Friday night. And they have a couple guards who I believe are like second and third in the conference in scoring or top five in scoring, and uh, both those guys are capable of going off on any given night. And you look at Bemidji State on Saturday, a team that uh, slowly has just gotten better over the years. They've got a couple of junior college transfers that really made a difference and a mm -hmm. couple of uh, you know veteran players that have been through the program in Tesdall and and uh, Rogstead and whatnot, but a uh, very good team and uh, re really, uh, I shouldn't say a surprise, but uh, a team mm -hmm. that could be in the top three or four in this conference very easily. And uh, they have uh, the best scorer in the conference, in my opinion, in Ellisor. He's a guy who is very versatile, a guy who will be a very difficult matchup for us. And um, I think this weekend, when you look at it, we'll be playing three of the top yeah. five scorers in the league right now. And, and that will present some matchup problems for us. Yeah, so well, it should be an exciting weekend of basketball. The Mustangs uh, play at Minnesota Duluth on Friday night. It starts at 8 o'clock. Saturday's game versus Bemidji State will be a 6 o'clock start in Bemidji. And the Mustangs will be on the road the next weekend uh, to wrap up the uh, month of January at Upper Iowa and Winona State before returning home for Hawaiian night weekend, February 3rd and 4th taking on Wayne State and August Stana. So it should be an exciting weekend of basketball. And Coach, uh, you know, be away from home, but uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you guys just focus up on basketball. It's just the guys and kind of you against the 
them mentality, I guess you could say, and it should be an exciting uh, uh, weekend for you guys to see what the Mustangs can do and, and continue to rise up here in the conference standings. And uh, right now, Mustangs in fourth place in the NSIC and sole possession right behind St. Cloud State and Minnesota State Moorhead. And Winona State leads the conference right now uh, with just one loss in league play. Well, for the head coach, Brad Bigler, I'm Kelly Law. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler here at Studio One, Marshall Cable Access, and at smsumustangs.com. Until next week, Go Mustangs!